In this video, we will show you how to assemble the Senko XP Fit Uni SC connector onto a 900 micron buffered fiber. You can also follow this procedure to terminate onto 250 micron coated fiber as well. However, you will not need to strip the 900 micron buffer from the fiber. I will point this step out when we get there. You will start by confirming that you have everything you need to perform this termination. This includes cable strippers, a collet chuck, an XP fit cut guide spacer, an assembly guide jig, your Senko XP fit uni SC connector, which comes with a back post, screw cap, and tube. And in this case, the connector is green, indicating APC. Blue would indicate UPC. And you will need a precision cleave tool. To begin, Insert the cable through the tube until you have 55 millimeters of cable protruding out of the tube. Then, insert the tube holding the cable into the collet chuck less than 15 millimeters from the back of the tube and slide the white clip on the chuck away from the terminating end, locking the cable into place. Now, this step applies for the 900 micron buffered fiber only. Strip the 900 micron buffer from the fiber in about 15 millimeter increments from the end of the tube to the end of the fiber using the appropriate hole on your cable strippers. Then, install the screw cap onto the cable with the threads facing the termination end of the cable. You can then slide the back post onto the beginning of the tube where you will feel resistance. At this point, you can install the screw cap onto the threads of the back post until you feel a positive stop. The next steps are to prepare the fiber for cleaving. You need to insert the back post assembly into the cut guide spacer. This cut guide spacer helps to determine the amount of 250 micron coating you need to strip off the fiber, and it helps keep the fiber at exactly the right length. It is recommended to leave the cable assembly in the cut spacer as you strip the coating from the fiber. Here, you can see we are very carefully stripping the coating from the tip of the cut spacer to the end of the fiber. Now. Remove the assembly from the cut spacer to test its integrity by screening the fiber. To do this, you must sweep the fiber to about 30 degrees in all four directions. Then, thoroughly clean it with an IPA dampened lint-free wipe and insert the assembly back into the cut spacer. Now you are ready to cleave the bare fiber. Make sure there is no gap around the cut spacer and the fiber is straight. Sometimes you may need to flip your cable or reposition it so that you end up with the cleanest and straightest possible cleave. Grab your cleaver and get ready to cleave the fiber. To do this, you must open the cleaver and check to see that your cleave bar is in the pre-cleave position towards you. Then, insert the cut spacer with no gaps, close the lid of the cleaver, and slide the cleave bar, which will cleanly cut the fiber. Always carefully dispose of your bare fiber. And now you no longer need the assembly in the cut spacer, so you can remove it. Finally, the last step is to insert your bare fiber assembly into the connector. Grab your guide jig and your connector and insert the connector into the guide jig from the top, making sure that it's installed all the way forward where the beginning of the arrow is indicated on the guide jig with no gaps. At this point, always check your fiber length by laying it on the beginning of the guide jig as shown. There are lines on the guide jig that indicate where each length should be stripped and cleaved to. To insert the bare fiber assembly in the connector, you must carefully insert the tip of the fiber in the conical hole in the connector and put the back post down in the corners of the guide jig where it is meant to sit. Then, slowly slide the cable forward until the back post reaches the small white clips that latch onto the sides of it and you hear a click. If there is any large bowing in the fiber before this point, stop, remove the fiber, and try again. However, when the assembly clicks into place, there should be a slight bow in the fiber. This is a good thing. You can then close the connector cover, making sure to secure it properly with two click sounds, and now it is safe to remove the connector wedge, which locks the fiber into place. Remove the connector from the guide jig, remove the collet chuck, and you are done terminating. You can check the connector for proper termination with an XP Fit test kit, which includes a visual fault locator, 
also known as a VFL, an SC to SC adapter, which has cutouts to show the windows properly, a 3dB attenuator, and a launch cable. In this case, our launch cable is SC-UPC to SC-APC because we have terminated an APC connector. If you have terminated a UPC connector, then you will need an SC-UPC to SC-UPC launch cable. First, plug the attenuator into the VFL. Then, plug the UPC end of the launch cable into that attenuator. Now, plug the other end of the launch cable into the SC to SC adapter. Now you can plug the terminated end into that adapter to make sure there is no light coming out of the windows of the connector. If excessive light is coming out of either window, then it is an incomplete termination and you must repeat it. If no light is showing, you have successfully completed your termination and you are ready to connect. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button, comment your thoughts, and subscribe for more Senko Fiber Optic content.